So I've spoken about the Sonic movies a fair amount, from my review of the first film to my hour-long discussion of the second, as well as a whole character analysis dedicated to movie knuckles and what made him so great. If I haven't made it clear enough already, I love this film. Much like the games, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 took pretty much everything great from Sonic 1 and just upped the level in basically every way. From the characters, to the cinematography, to the storytelling. I'm not saying this is the greatest film of all time or anything, but come on, the Sonic movies had no right in being good. Much less this good. But if there was one character that a fair chunk of people had some pretty mixed opinions on, it was Tails. But I feel like some of the hate thrown his way is a bit unjustified, and I actually think he is pretty well written here. Especially in comparison to the absolute shitfest of his character that we got in the 2010s. Sonic, help me! You don't want to be like this. This is disgusting. This is awful in every way. But as always, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Let's break down his character in this film and talk about what makes it so great and how it can progress further. But before we begin, I do have a Patreon, so if you want to support this channel beyond the much appreciated like and subscription, then that is the best way to do so. Especially since my Sonic character analysis was demonetized, why YouTube, why... Anyways, the link for that is in the description below as always, so go and check that out if you want to, and let's get back to the video. Ever since the adventure games, many fans, myself included, have been dying to see a Tails on that caliber. We wanted to see the hero that emerged at the end of his story in Adventure 1, growing from a scared kid into someone who would realize his own potential and stand his ground against even the biggest threats, like Robotnik. We did get a couple of decent interpretations of the character, and then we got some seriously awful and outright painful to watch interpretations of the character courtesy of the 2010s. All to say that Tails has really been done an injustice, at least until this movie. I think a good place to start is the design of the character, and I really like it. I think it captures the essence of a more classic design, looking both cute but also with that hint of strength and determination. I also like that they added this backpack to his design, I think it just works with the character and his traits, like with him being a good engineer and creating his own gadgets and whatnot. As well as this, I have to give huge props to Colleen O'Shaughnessy who really hit the nail on the head with this performance, showcasing an array of emotions with the character without it seeming out of place. This is definitely my favourite Tails performance so far. The movie, though, brought Tails back to a state similar to his early Adventure 1 incarnation, showcasing many of the characteristics that were introduced and developed in that story. Seeing as I already have an entire character analysis about Tails and the games on the channel, there is no real reason for me to dive into his video game counterpart all that much outside of a few select examples, so feel free to go and give that a watch if you haven't. One thing this movie does pretty well is it actually gives us a reason for Tails' insecurity. We learn that Tails was actually ridiculed and made out to be an outcast on his home planet because of having two Tails, leading him to being alone and a bit isolated. This would obviously make him unsure of himself and was actually what led him to meeting Sonic in the first place. You see, that shockwave that Sonic emitted in the first film was actually galaxy-wide and Tails, using that, was able to track Sonic to Earth and actually watched him as he lived on that planet. The whole watching Sonic thing can seem a bit creepy, but I think it was just innocent entertainment for Tails. Again, he was shunned and friendless, so it would make sense that he would follow in some of these weirder solo adventures. Plus, for him, Sonic was someone to look up to. Sonic himself was also an outcast on Earth, and seeing Sonic making the best of his situation and never giving up helped Tails to see that he has value himself. Allowing him to, probably for the first time, see himself in a positive light when he probably just saw himself as everyone else saw him. As a freak. I love that his admiration for Sonic here is actually explained and given more context, which is something that the games never really went out of their way in explaining. Just watching Sonic though didn't completely cure tales of his insecurity and fears. I mean, it'd be a goddamn miracle if it did. We see several times in the story where he's just not sure of his ability in aiding Sonic, or is just outright scared. Take, for example, the Siberian dance sequence. There's a moment where everyone is just chanting at Tails, calling him a freak, and Tails is frightened here and is probably getting flashbacks to the shunning on his world. Hell, he even outright says, I can't do this, Sonic! I'm not brave like you! My gadget got us in this mess, and I lost your map, and we're gonna get tossed into a fire! 
However, it's Sonic believing in Tails that actually boosts his confidence, further giving credence to their growing friendship. Another example is when they actually discover that they have to go to Siberia in the first place to get an artifact to help them in their quest. Tails is immediately reluctant to go, saying that he isn't a field guy and that he's just here to warn Sonic about Knuckles. Again, it's Sonic's belief that motivates him to go. This is similar to the games, well, Adventure 1 at least. There, Tails was always following Sonic and did get scared from time to time, mainly when he was alone. But he learned to manage his fears and gained the courage to act independently by the end and we do see that a bit with this film. Like when he was injured by Robotnik, he wakes up from unconsciousness and the first thing he tries to do, even while injured and barely able to fly, is help Sonic. Or when Sonic is getting his ass kicked by Knuckles, he drives by in a cop car and rescues him without a second thought. Hell, even in the prequel comic, which is canon by the way, he finds out that Knuckles is going after Sonic and so he travels through all kinds of worlds encountering many dangers just to get to Earth to warn Sonic because he had that much of an impact on him. And even by the end of the film, he was right there ready to take on Robotnik with the others. We can see clear character growth here but I think it's important to note that his confidence mostly derives from Sonic. It isn't until the end of the film that Tails seems to have his own aura of confidence about him, and I think that's because Tails just hasn't completed his character arc yet. Unlike Sonic and Knuckles who did have full arcs in this film, Tails seemingly doesn't, and I believe that that is because of character focus. If the writers tried to give Tails a complete arc in this film, along with the other characters, then it could have resulted in the characters not getting enough focus because it split too much, leading to the characters themselves feeling quite flat and not as fleshed out. I think that the choice to primarily focus on Knuckles here was a really good one, and it's clear that they are definitely setting Tails up to fully complete his character arc in the next film. I do think that Tails' character arc should continue in similar vein to the games. Well, the adventure games, not the, not the new ones. We've seen him grow and become a bit more confident, but he does still appear to have to rely on Sonic as the precursor for that confidence. I believe that the way forward is to show Tails stepping out of Sonic's shadow and becoming his own person, who is an outright hero that can stand on his own two feet. The example from the games that I bring up time and time again is the Adventure 2 cutscene where Robotnik supposedly killed Sonic. In that scene, Tails didn't cry or whine, he immediately faces Robotnik in one final showdown because that is what Sonic would have wanted. Plus, in Adventure 2, we do see him taking the situation into his own hands and acting by himself multiple times. Even at the end of Adventure 1, he's doubtful that he can save Station Square all by himself, but he did because he realized that he can't keep relying on Sonic for help and guidance forever and that he needs to become his own person. This is the direction that I believe the character needs to head in in order to complete his character arc. That he doesn't need Sonic's belief to act, but that he needs to believe in himself, which is the message carried by the adventure counterpart. As well as this though, the movie does go out of its way from time to time to showcase Tails' ingenuity through his gadgets and inventions. We see him doing things like piloting the tornado, to him being able to track the energy signature from Sonic in the first film, to being able to travel between worlds in the prequel comic, and even tapping into his inner Naruto and using that shadow clone jutsu to summon copies of himself. He built all of this. There's a segment of the film as well where Maddie and Rachel use his gadgets whilst he's unconscious, and whilst I would have liked Tails to use them, it does still showcase his genius. Again, I believe that this is all part of the build-up of his character arc, displaying that he has the potential to rival Robotnik in terms of genius, similar to the dichotomy seen in Adventure 2 between the two characters. Another trait that I haven't really brought much attention to yet is his socialization skills. Tails feels more like the middle ground between Sonic and Knuckles. We know Sonic is a very extroverted character, whereas Knuckles is a very introverted character who is socially awkward due to his isolation. Tails, though, feels more omniverted than either side, sharing a mix of traits across the spectrum. We do see that he lacks social etiquette from his own isolation and such in similar vein to Knuckles as there are times where communicating effectively was a little difficult. And you know, the whole watching Sonic's life thing with little regard to privacy or ethics, you know, that, that's a little bit weird. We even see him flustered upon meeting Sonic when he rambles on a bit and doesn't let Sonic get a word in edgewise. It is an honor to finally meet you Sonic. Is it okay if I call you Sonic? Everyone calls me Tails. You're probably wondering why. 
I will also say that Movie Tales here suffers a bit from the old tell don't show, mainly in terms of the backstory. It's something that's glossed over fairly quickly in a bit of expository dialogue and I think that the movie could have done a much better job in actually portraying this to the audience. You know, maybe we could get a flashback or something like Knuckles got. What is this home planet? Why can't we see it? You know, stuff like that. It just feels like this was a bit too brushed aside here. As well as this, I'm not the biggest fan of having to read a comic book as a prerequisite to get the entire series of events leading up to the film. I think that they probably should have diverted some of the time from, say, the wedding sequence and used that to properly showcase his backstory. There's also criticism from people about Tails' screen time or lack thereof due to him being knocked unconscious in the middle of the film. Again, I would have liked more screen time, but I do believe that this was done a bit purposefully to show that Tails doesn't quite have the durability of characters like Sonic or Knuckles. He is pretty much the brains of the operation. Ultimately though? I really like this interpretation of the character. We have yet to see him complete his character arc, but from what we have seen, this is a very faithful adaptation of the video game character. There are some differences made to his origin and by proxy his reason for following Sonic when compared to the games, but they're actually well written and integrated here. Plus, I'm okay with these slight deviations being taken with the character here as this is a completely separate universe to the main canon, similar to how I felt about Knuckles and Sonic. But this movie shows him as the shy, ingenious, and slightly introverted character with lingering insecurities that are assuaged by his idol. By the end, we're starting to see him come into his own character by him jumping into the action and taking Robotnik head on. And there is still plenty of room to grow. He isn't a pointless addition, an arrogant prick, or a complete coward like in the 2010s. He shows his courage and determination and starts to become the hero that we all know him to be. Now, all he has to do is just believe in himself. Well, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy the video, then feel free to like and subscribe to the channel to keep up with all future content. If you really love the content and want to go even further in supporting the channel, then why not check out my Patreon? The link is in the description below as always. And speaking of Patreon, a big special thanks to all my patrons. You guys are absolute legends. Other than that though, I thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.